Do you know what the proper pressure reduction that you need to create lines that are thick on a smooth surface? Or how about what pressure reduction, maybe even nozzle size you're gonna need to do smooth and small and tiny dots and lines on a porous surface? The answer is, it depends. And I know nobody likes to hear that. The reality is both of those things were painted by the same PSI, but diff slightly different reductions. And they were both painted with a 0.35 Iwata Eclipse needle and nozzle. What I have is four different paints. All of these paints are supposedly all airbrush ready paints. That's a pretty dramatic difference for paints that are all designed to work in an airbrush. So there's more than one thing that affects how thick that paint is. One is the resin and binder that's used in it, but also the pigments in there. And then there's something called pigment shear size, which also could affect when you start getting down into really tiny airbrushes. But what if I just told you that there's a way in which you can learn to understand what your paint is doing so that you know what to do when you start having problems with your paint. In other words, you can self-correct and you won't have to worry about how much reducer do I have in this and how much PSI am I running. Most of the time, and I'm sure you guys have asked this question and people are like, I can't tell you what PSI I'm running at um, right now. I can tell you that I can be running as low as 10 PSI. If I was doing t-shirts, I'd be running some really thick paints and I could be running 60, 65. I don't really do textiles anymore. But anyway, if you pick the red pill, then I'm going to tell you what's going on with your paints and how to fix it. If you pick the blue pill, I'm still going to give you the same answer because they're both M&Ms and I'm going to eat them. I'm just going to grab some paint, airbrush, and I'm going to start making some lines on this hard surface. Now looking at the lines that I made right there, I can immediately tell that my paint is too thin and my pressure is too high and I'm trying to go too heavy for what that is and the paint is pushing itself, the air is pushing and blowing the paint apart on the surface. So if I've got, if my paint can be thickened up, you know, I could add thicker paint or I could turn down the pressure. There's two things that we really have control over. So we're gonna paint everything with one size needle and nozzle combination, which is gonna be this Iwata Eclipse today. So I'm gonna turn my pressure down, listen to it as I'm turning it down. And then I'm going to try again with some test sprays. Now, what's happening is I'm getting little skips. See? I'm getting little skips. It's not my paints, you know. And that's not me doing that. That's... So, that means I turn the pressure down too far. So, instead of turning the pressure back up, I'm actually going to add a dropper reducer in here. So by adding a little bit of reducer, I didn't have to turn the pressure back up. And then I was able to get some pretty smooth lines right away on a porous surface or in a hard surface. So let's move over to a porous surface and take a look at what happens on a porous surface. That is an example of a paint that is too thin that is actually saturating the surface too much and starting to break apart when it hits the surface. So you know if you get that where the paint's starting to break apart or if it's saturating the surface too much, then your paint's too thin and you're going to have to add body back to it. And you can do that if you want these really light lines, you can add transparent base to bring body back to the paint. This is an example of when the paint is either too thick or the pressure is down too low. This pebbly texture right here is an example of what happens when your pressure is too low for the viscosity of paint you got. Notice that pebbly 
spray on the outside. It's a dry and grainy spray. And I raise the pressure up a bunch and I come in here to put another line in. Too much, starting to spread apart. It's starting to spread apart, starting to spider out on the edges. Now I might further reduce, and I didn't even turn the pressure down, I just further reduced my paint to be able to go in there and get these tiny little dots like that. And whether you can tell or not, I'm not sure if it'll show up in photo, but those are actually little tiny, tiny dagger strokes next to that penny. Anyway, somebody on Facebook decided to message me and tell me that I ought to master my airbrush before I start trying to teach other people because he saw my dagger strokes for the beginner video, so I thought I'd just do a little flexing. So when I talk about viscosity and shear size, of course you saw those paints and how different the viscosity, that's your viscosity, is how much the paint will run, how much difference that is. So that's your viscosity and you can adjust that with reducer. When it comes to sheer size of pigments, some pigments are not ground as fine as others, which is why it's a bad idea to take acrylic tube paints, heavy body acrylics, and thin them down for an airbrush. You can get by with that with a larger needle and nozzle size combination. But if you guys start getting into detail airbrushes, when you're talking about 0.2 needle and nozzle combinations, some of your pigments are ground finer than the others. So you may have a heavy pigment load, like Createx Illustration Paint has a quite a bit of pigment in it, but the pigment is ground finer than the pigments in, say, Wicked Airbrush Paint or Auto Air Airbrush Paint. Gold and High Flow are very, very finely ground pigments, and the pigment load is even lighter, so the paint overall viscosity is even lower. If you're looking to thin your paints because you want to create very, very subtle blends and tones, you can always add the base, the transparent base, instead of adding reducer to make it a little bit more transparent. Don't always say, I'm going to go for the reducer because I want this to be a really, really faint and easy line. Use your transparent base and get the body that you need and make sure that your paint's spraying right and you're going to be better off. So when you've reached that balance, your exercises are going to be get a little bit easier. If you've been following along my beginner tutorials, I know I told you guys start out with really, really reduced paint, but you're going to have to start getting a little bit of paint in there. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of reasons with that too. But things should get to where you can, you know, where the paint's flowing. It should be flowing smooth. It shouldn't be overly grainy. Yeah, you're going to get some overspray. Um, you know... And you may need a thicker paint if you want to work a stronger, harder line than this. And, you know, the porosity of your surface. In other words, if I'm working on a hard surface and I'm working on a porous surface like the back side of this piece of paper, how the paint is going to hit that is going to be a little bit different. So ultimately, though, it comes down to if you're getting that pebbly, grainy texture, you know you need to turn up your pressure or add some reducer. If you're getting that push apart like that, then you gotta turn down the pressure or you gotta add more body to the paint. It's also important to understand, trigger control matters too. Um, I've got straight paint, no reducer, my air pressure's not that high in the cup right now. So, you know, if I sit here and hold it, it's still gonna blast apart if I sit here and try to sit in one spot, even though, you can tell that paint is needs more reducer or I need more pressure, one or the other. You want to get in that middle section to where you start flowing, smooth, comfortable. Once you start to grasp that, you'll be able to just go along and just paint and paint. And, you know, pretty soon you won't have to think about how you're painting or what you're doing. You'll just paint. By the way, a good looking dagger stroke and hopefully you guys got some sheets that look like this already if not i don't know what y'all are doing but hopefully you know your dagger strokes are you start out and slowly taper down so start working on if you're one of those newcomers start working on your long dagger strokes like that tapering off to a point 
and you know of course then you got your pinwheels and all that from there all right so you hear a lot of us talk about over reducing our paints and that's what we're talking about we're actually talking about paint that's reduced to the point where it'll actually blow out on you if you pull back on your trigger too far and as your trigger control gets better you can over reduce your paint and paint like that but you got to remember that you have to work that in layers so if you're wanting a nice sharp dark line in a single stroke you're not going to be able to have that super thin paint if you're willing to build up your paint in layers you can do that to a point there's a certain point in which your paint will start to break apart and not stick and it depends partially on the type of reducers that you use i want to talk about homemade reducers real quick reducer at least here in the united states are not that expensive and i don't know how much paint you guys go through but i don't go through i i do dozens and dozens of paintings every single month and i don't go through a ton of reducer i go through more reducer than paint obviously i buy my reducer in quartz I don't have a problem with people using homemade reducers to practice with but if you're going to make sure you test before you start doing that on something that you have to worry about longevity um, when you start mixing cleaning products up you're kind of stretching uh, some airbrush paints thin just great with water golden high flow is one of them works just great with water createx in particular almost uh, everything except for their standard Createx line tend to work best with a reducer. Um, I'm not going to recommend a homemade reducer to you. I'm saying if you want to use it for some practice, save a few bucks, that's fine. I'm all about saving bucks. But remember that if you get into painting hard surfaces and things like that later, you have to know that that paint is going to stay stuck. Not today but next year and the year after that. All right, I got one last thing about over-reducing your paints. And this is something, you know, that, you know, experience will start to teach you is if you over-reduce certain paints, like Createx Illustration happens to be one, you can actually, as you're spraying, start removing paint because your reducer is re-wetting those paint and it starts removing paint that you've already laid down. Obviously, that is a problem. I have found that the more experience that I get, the thicker the paints that I have worked with. And it's actually dramatically changed the way I do my art. I make my paints, I still occasionally really reduce down paints, but more often than not, I use less than 10% reducer to my paint. And I know some really, really well-known artists that use absolutely no reducer in their paint that i know some that'll reduce 80 to 90 percent so somewhere it gets into personal preference so anyway guys i'm bill kennedy with w leon artistry if you got something out of this video today hey if you would throw a share up for me throw a like you know if you really really like the video you should hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell because i got new videos coming out all the time anyway we appreciate y'all stopping by here Y'all have a good one. We'll talk to you later. Bye.